Let's talk with the CEO and co-founder of Yubo, Sasha Lazimi, about a better way forward for social apps, one that's less lonely, more connective, and even fun. We're here for a YouTube exclusive sponsored by Yubo. And Sasha, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Very happy to be here. Great to have you. Good to see you again. I'd love to talk a little bit about what Yubo is for those of us who haven't heard of it before and how you started it, because it's a social app that's been around since 2015. And for some people, it may be surprising, but it really is a large one. And we'd love to hear the story of how you began the company and who it serves and why it's been able to grow. Right, right. So, so Yubo is a social discovery platform that enables anyone to just hang out and have fun with people they don't know and just have a meaningful interaction um, anywhere in the world at any time. And hang out and, online, like live on video. Yes. yes, exactly. Online, live on video, live on audio, also on a one-to-one -one chat, text that you, you, you could have a messaging uh, other people. But the idea is really that you connect with people that are not from your network, people you don't know, people that can be in other country or in another city. You just need to speak the same languages. And if you are at home and you just want to start a conversation with a group of people from the same age or um, with uh, someone with the same interest, you can just do that in one minute by using Yubo. Great. And so I think that most of social media today, they would argue, like the big companies would argue, Facebook would argue, we're connecting people as well. So, but those have, we, we can probably both agree have had a, a negative effect on society. There's this Jonathan Haidt book about that's coming out and there's some argument about whether or not his arguments that social media has made us more disconnected and making teens depressed. Uh, but you are positioning yours as this antidote to some of those problems. And I think it really starts and ends with the fact that people can connect live and talk with each other as opposed to read posts and get angry. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and, and to be honest, social network today fail at being social and making people socialize online. And that's exactly how and why we created Yubo as a platform. Because on social network today, you are connected, but you browse video content and you look for media, for brand, but you are very passive on what you are doing and you feel more and more lonely. And there is really no way to socialize like you would do if you were going to a festival, to a bar, and to meet new people, to make new friends. This is really a different uh, experience. And on Yubo, our goal is really to empower the way of how you socialize online by adding the power of the technology to reproduce exactly how you have interaction with people in real life. And let's talk a little bit more about social media. Is it interesting to you that it's sort of trended away from the newsfeed interactions or like posting on people's wall towards a more of a TikTok style feed. I mean, that is, it's interesting that it's even become more media and less social. What do you think about that trend? Yeah, it's true. It's true. I, I think it, it, it mainly because of their business model, where they want you to, to spend as many time as you can watching ads basically and so the more you watch content and videos that are interesting for you the more you will stay on the platform and this is really linked to their ad business model and this is exactly why we didn't go to the ad business model on our side and why we have a, a very different business model which is through in-app purchases and, and subscription and i also think that those platforms are more now like TV, like media, like brand, where you don't really connect anymore with people and with your network, which is why people feel more and more lonely in those days. And talk a little bit about how Yubo works and how you decided to build it and how it evolved over time. Yes. So I've been on the mission of improving the way of how people connect and interact with the same co-founder since almost 15 years now. And uh, Yubo is, a, is our third product. Before Yubo, we failed with two previous product products and, and, and Yubo was really the iteration of what we learned on building consumer application. And when we started uh, Yubo and this platform, we noticed that even, and, and it's happening even today, that millions of 
people are sharing their social handles to find new followers, to make new friends, and to find new people to interact with because there is no way to do that on social media today. It's really, really complicated to, to connect with people from, that are not from your network. And we focus on, on that part. And at the beginning, you, Yubo was really a way to find new social handles and find new usernames that you could add to your, to your own network. And we didn't know at the beginning that it was all about socialization. We had the hypothesis that might be also to become an influencer or to find new content to, to follow. But after a year launching the platform, we reached 10 millions of signups. And we understood that our target was the Generation Z because back in the day, we have 99% of people between 13 to, to 17. We still target the Generation Z, because, but they are older. Now we target more mainly adults and people between 18 to, to 25 years old. But this generation and the next generation and even us today are more and more connected. And we more and more have this need of socializing online, like we are socializing offline because this is part of our life. And this need wasn't told by the social network. And that's why those people and people are still doing that today, sharing their social handles and trying to add people they don't know on those networks that are not meant for that. And so when I'm in the product, how do I end up connecting with different people, joining group chats, joining one-on-one -on -one chats? So it's exactly like in, 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 in real life. So let's say that you enter in a festival or in a bar where everyone wants to socialize. What would happen? You would have more group of people that will be together naturally, naturally speaking about a, a different subject, speaking about their, their interest, speaking about a movie or debating. And it's exactly the same on the platform. So you can see a list of group of people based on their profile, based on the topic of the conversation, based on their interest. And as in real life, you can enter in the room, you can listen to what they are saying, and they can invite you to join the conversation right away. And you can start interacting with video, audio, and chat, everything in real time. And this is working great because 95% of rooms have only streamers that are speaking together. And it's on average four to five people that are speaking together, exactly like it would be at a festival where people are just discovering each other and speaking as a group. And so you really want to um, emphasize there's, you know, for this app, there's social discovery that happens. I've been hearing that in this conversation, right? You talked earlier about social discovery. Uh, and clearly the way that the product is set up is for discovery. So can you talk a little bit more about how people discover others in the app? And then why is discovery so important? In some ways, it seems like the antidote to some of the problems that we talked about with mainstream social networking now. Yes, yes, it's, it's a good point. So when you sign up on the platform, we are going to, at the beginning, do a age estimation of your profile because safety is very important for us and even in real life, you want to meet people in a safe space. And it right. this is exactly what we, what we are doing. Wait, as so, a, so how do you do that? Because that's an interesting, you know, your ability to figure out how old people are is an interesting point. Yes. So, so we are using AI. Uh, we have a, a, a partner called Yoti that provide a, a third party API that we are using. And you will enter, you will enter a date of birth when you sign up, but we want to be sure that you enter the right date of birth. So we are going to scan your face and estimate your age to compare it with the date of birth you enter. And if it matches the date of birth, then you can enter the platform. If it doesn't match, then we will ask you to provide more detail, like identity documents, a video of yourself to ensure that this is you, you are the real person and this is your real age to ensure that you will go in the right age group. Because in real life and, and when you, 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 you meet new people, usually they are from the same age. Right. And then talk a little bit more about this idea of social discovery. So you, you've been grouped with people of the similar age. And then where do we go from there? Yeah. So, 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 so the goal on the platform is really to 
make sure that you will pick with as many people as you want and you will be able to either select an interest because you play Fortnite, for example, or you watch Batman movie. So you can click on this interest and you can find people that have this interest and you can send friend requests to those people. You can enter in a room with people that are debating um, or, 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 or having also the same interest as you. And people are coming on our platform just to have conversation. At some point, we don't really care if you are making new friends and if you end up having a friendship. What we care is that you have conversation with other people and you are socializing with other people. Right. So, you know, it's very different from the typical influencer model, right? You talk about people who are interested in games. Typical, the thing that, that's worked most uh, well on social media has been you go on Twitch and you watch somebody play Fortnite, not that you speak with other people that play Fortnite. So it's a very counterintuitive insight, right, in terms of the way that you want to handle yeah, this. Yeah. How did you come to that? And why, why, is it, why is it working? Because, you know, you look at the platforms with the biggest scale and it seems like that influencer model is working so well for them, but it leaves people a little bit empty, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and to be honest, we don't have any influencer on our platform. Because it won't work for an influencer to come on, on, on Yubo. And we even tried to bring them at some point to test some uh, marketing channel and user acquisition. But there were no interest for them to use our platform. Because as it's a small group of people speaking together and the goal is for you to speak with other people in one-on-one -on -one or in a group, there is no point for an influencer to come out on our platform because they won't have an audience and there is no way to review the content. There is no likes. There is um, no followers, which is very different. So I would say that we are doing exactly the opposite of what actual social network is doing. There is no performance. It's all about individual behavior. There is no like, no view, no comment. It's all about real-time interactions. And it's not about individual behavior, like on social network. It's about group behavior. Because this is how the society works today. Everything is about group behavior when you are meeting new people, when you are going to work, when you are going to school, to college, everything is done by group. And this is exactly how we are thinking about the product and how we are working on it. We want our users to be able to connect within a minute to new people and to start talking with them as much as they can. Right. And that being able to connect within a minute is a, is a promise that you make, right? Effectively, you, you log in within a minute, you can be speaking with others. Yeah, even, even within seconds. Like you can just sign up and you can just go in the, in the room feed and you can click in a room and start speaking with someone. You can create your own room and start speaking with someone. You can send friend requests to people and start speaking with someone in private. So it can be in real time. It can be also uh, as a chat and you will receive a ton of messages from, from people. And this is, this is how it works. So we want you to spend time on your own and on the platform, but by being active and by having a conversation and discovering yourself and the world by discussing with other people and not by being passive and just we waiting in front of um, your phone and sliding where this is because this is why people are feeling lonely because they are passive they don't speak with other people and at some point at the end of the of the day when you go out of those platform you feel bad about yourself because you said i didn't do nothing and i was one hour watching videos and and what did i i learn but when you've done a meaningful conversation with a group of people and that have the same interest when you learn seeing when you learn new things about uh, new people and their history and their life, then you feel good about yourself at the, at the end, you know? Right. Absolutely. I mean, even Facebook's own research shows that passive media consumption leaves people worse off. And that's why they went through this whole moment to do meaningful social interactions, but they ended up pivoting right back to this TikTok style of media. Yeah, exactly. And, and at some point, even with the, the, the streaming platform and there is a lot of studies that, that show that at some point, and even in, 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 the, in the US, that you will buy a big house and you will stay in your house. You will watch a streaming platform. You will order food to your place and you will stay 
at your place and everything is made for you to stay at your place and to watch a screen and being passive. But nothing is made for you to just interact with other people and having meaningful conversation like we had 50 years ago when we not, didn't have internet and we didn't have phone and we had to go out to do things because we were bored. Well, today with all of this connection, you feel more and more lonely. And that's why we are building Yubo and, and, and we think that social discovery is the next vertical of social platform because people need a way to socialize also online when they are home. Yeah, it is It is crazy. And the way that you outline that makes me say, oh, well, it's no surprise that society has a loneliness problem. It's like, you're right. You work hard to get more space to yourself, to further isolate yourself from people. You sign up yeah. for, you know, Netflix and HBO and Disney Plus and whatever it is uh, to be able to watch things in the privacy of your own home. You don't even have to go to the restaurant anymore because you can exactly. order in and on exactly. the Uber Eats. And then when you're done with all that and ready to go to sleep, you go on TikTok. And it's like... yeah. And- Exactly. And, and even if you, when you go working, you, you take the subway and you are on your phone, you don't watch the face of other people. When you go to the restaurant and you are alone, you watch your phone. And when you go in holidays and you are in the beach, you watch your phone, you know, you don't, yep. anything is done for you to just speak with other people, you know? Definitely. And it's like, I was also going to ask you, why do you think people find it so hard, so difficult to, um, why do people find so much difficulty offline to connect with people? And it's just because that we we have like had this as like the way that you outline our society has isolated us and we don't have those type of in-person interactions that we do before. Yeah. And the options in front of us are often those mainstream social networks. It's like Yeah, exactly. And and, and there is even study if you for, for, for very young people uh, at um, at school when they have a break. At some point, they don't even play together. They don't play football. They don't play soccer. Everyone is on a is seat and they don't do nothing because they are not used to do activities, you know, not used to, to, to speak together. And, 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 and I think that's why this is very important. And, and, and this is, and it has always been a primary need to socialize with other people in real life. Now it's also a primary need to also socialize online in a very safe way and this is our mission at the the company and it's interesting because the jonathan Hyde book that's out about how social media has made teens depressed uh talks about how if you're one person in the group who were to delete let's say some of these passive uh media channels you would feel cut off uh but if everybody were to delete it people would be happier so i think this idea of like there is this desire for that type of social connection. And that's a place where you guys really come in and say, hey, we have a, a better uh, alternative as opposed to the stuff that you might be seeing, you know, in the primary feeds. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and at some point, it, 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 it might also to, to do that online, it, it might be a good step also to do that offline because when you are on our platform, it's safe, you have your profile, you meet other people from the same age, from the same interest, and you can start speaking with them on online and then go offline because we we've done some users interviews and we 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 met with users uh, from the u.s that were not in the same state it was like 19 people um young adults that meet on the platform three years ago and we're meeting in the first time after mm-hmm. spending three years on the platform speaking together and, and 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 having those important kind of interaction you need in your life to 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 to, to grow and and to express for set. Right. And as we're talking, there are some other startups that come to mind. I'm thinking about House Party, Clubhouse, even this new air chat, right? And they all seem to be a way to try to connect community uh, online. They've, they've gone through their struggles. So what do you think makes Yubo different? Yeah, so so it's true that we we have some common, common things on the platform. I would say what is almost the same is the interaction path. We are with the, the live and the fact that uh, everything is in real time and you are speaking with other people with video or with audio for a clubhouse, for, for example. But the big difference between those platforms is the first one with a house party. It was that it was with your close friends and it was the same graph of people you know and that you are speaking to on other messaging platforms like WhatsApp, FaceTime, Snapchat. So... At some point, house party was just 
a feature that those other big platform could implement. And this is what happened. And this is what killed house party at this, uh, at this time. And for clubhouse, so they didn't have video, but they have audio. If I, if I remember well, I right. think they, they, they still, uh, they still exist. But the thing is with uh, a clubhouse is that it was about performance and it was on the graph of Twitter and it was something to be connected with your followers and the followers of your followers. And it wasn't natural conversation you would have with someone you don't know. And it wasn't, it was a prepared conversation, like a talks, you know, and you could review the content, you could like the content, you could share the content. So for all of those things, again, it wasn't a conversation you would have at a festival, at a bar where with someone you don't know, or with a group of people you don't know, and it was about performance. So it was again, a kind of a feature that other social network could implement on their platform and this is also what they did you know spotify implemented a, a way to to do a, a clubhouse and other pl platform did it uh, because it was about performance it was on the same graph of those platform and it wasn't about interacting and socializing with other people yeah it's so interesting as we talk about it i'm like oh yeah clubhouse really was an influencer platform it wasn't really a conversation yeah. platform it was an like influencer platform disguised as a conversation platform Whereas exactly. what you're doing is like quite different. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we don't have influencers. That's why the room have on average four to five people and, and they, they never, we, we don't have room with thousands of people in it. Like it's three small rooms of people interacting together, hanging out, having fun and playing games, debating like you would do if you were in your living room uh, and having a party and speaking with the other people. Yeah. And now let's talk. I have two more topics I want to cover. Uh, the first is is artificial intelligence. You brought it up a little bit in terms of using computer vision to assess the ages of the people that are signing up and put them in cohorts. I imagine there's an AI safety uh, uh, element that you have as well. I uh, would love to hear about how you're using AI for safety. And then also, does it combine into your discovery at all? Yeah, so, so to be honest, in, in the background, we use AI everywhere. So mostly on the safety, also on the recommendation part, and and also uh, for, for for some paying feature that I will speak about a bit a bit later. But let's start with safety. So everything that is visual, textural, and audio is scanned by algorithm that which flag the bad content to our safety specialist to either automatically delete the the bad content or help our safety specialist to investigate if there is something to do on the on the platform. We also use AI proactively. For example, if you want to send your phone number privately to someone on our platform, we will warn you to say, hey, this is a private information. Are you sure you want to share this information? Because at some point it can be dangerous if you if you if you do that. And so we use AI for that. We also use AI and gen AI for uh, a specific feature we have on the platform called Pixels. So Pixels is basically a, a feature where you can offer pixel art to other users so they can put those pixel art in their profile. And before generative AI, we, we were asking artists to create uh, those pixels and we have collection every month with the uh, artist. And, and now we are using generative AI to create new collection every every month uh, which is a uh, very powerful uh, we are gaining a, a lot of time and um, we are capable of creating much more collection within a month uh, and, and having a lot more uh, creativity with that because uh, we don't have to take care about contract finding the artist uh, it's we don't pay for that so it's a uh, it's uh, it's quite uh, crazy and we are also working on um, assisting our users when they are making new friends. So for the, for, for example, we, we are assisting them when they are sending a private information, to inform them and educate them on what is dangerous on the application. And maybe at some point we will also help them start the conversation, giving topics of conversation and helping them translating what they are, they are translating things because 
in real time, there is 25% of users that are speaking with other users from different countries. And sometimes they don't speak the same languages. To be honest, for example, the, the mm. French people, they don't speak well English. So it can be complicated uh, for them to interact with the uh, American people. So AI can really help for that. That's so cool. Yeah, just the, this ability for AI to help break down these boundaries is awesome. It reminds me of there was this Google, uh, I think it was a prototype or a commercial that they teased a couple of years ago where they had these glasses that tran would translate what people are saying in real time yeah. to help break down language boundaries. And I think we're just getting closer and closer to that. So it's very cool to hear that you're thinking about that. Speaking of France, uh, here we are. We're speaking with a French uh, uh, tech company. Your website says something like made uh, from Paris with love. And th isn't this a moment for French tech? I mean, speaking with you, there's Mistral, which is really making some noise in the artificial intelligence world. Talk a little bit about what it's like being a tech entrepreneur in France. And am I right in thinking your country is really having a moment right now as far as tech development goes? No, no, you're right. You're right. It's true. It's true. It's been almost 10 years, I, I would say even more, that the uh, French entrepreneurs are raising, and especially in a consumer and AI field, because there is a more and more uh, entrepreneurs that are succeeding, investing in the in other entrepreneurs, giving advices to 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 us, and there is a lot of meetups and more and more money from the VC to invest, and the government is also helping a lot uh, with uh, with taxes and and giving loan with very low rate for company to, 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 to start. So there is everything in France to succeed at some point. And we also have the best engineer and they are not expensive. I mean, it's four times less expensive than in the U S but engineers are very, very good, especially on the research and development field and on the coding field, we are quite good. I think that uh, Facebook and Apple open, um, and also Google open uh, uh, research and development in AI in France because we have very strong uh, engineers here. And I can attest, uh, me and my co-founder, we come from engineer school and we know that we have very strong uh, potential here. So I think that's why um, we, we, we are succeeding so, so far. Yeah, and of course, one of my favorite uh thinkers to speak with on AI is Jan LeCun, another man from France. So yeah, exactly. exactly. Definitely elevating, um, elevating the whole field, really. Uh, and uh, it's been cool to watch this rise. Well, Sasha, yeah, and there is also Photoroom. Photo um, yes. I, I, I know the guys, the Photoroom is are, are great. There is also a lot of gaming company like uh, Madbox, Homa Games, uh, that are very, very powerful and, uh, and emerging uh, today. I think I need a you know, book a flight uh, over to go see the country, which I've been to once and very yeah, much enjoyed, yeah. and also meet the terrific tech entrepreneurs out there. Sasha, agree, thank you agree. so much for joining. It was great speaking with you. Congrats with everything that you're doing with Ubo. Uh, for people who are interested in downloading the app and getting started, what would you recommend they do? I recommend they go, they go on our website, ubo.live. They can go on the Apple Store or on the Play Store, and they can download the, the app right away and within a minute start speaking with uh, with other people sasha lazimi great speaking with you thanks for joining us here on youtube thank you thank you, thank you alex All right, everybody thanks for watching we'll be back with a new video shortly